to approach the homeless man, as I could see he was completely passed out drunk from the empty alcohol bottle laying next to the bench Please he was sleeping cut on. The man finger. As I cautiously He's... approached the man, I began hey, to hey, elevate I'm trying his pinky to help you. in air I'm trying to help you right here. I'm trying to help you so you don't jail. I'm trying to help you. the knife in one quick motion. Bro, I'm trying to help you. Whoa! That's when I ran back towards the main road as the man screamed in agony. These are the four OF that you shouldn't be on. OF. OF. Part 1. I was in my early 20s and was unfortunately unemployed. All right, all right. The stress of not having a job while living with the obligation of having student loans, in addition to the monthly payments for my Bill student housing, pay. always weighed heavy on my shoulders. Normal, normal, I was a student it's normal, majoring it's within normal. the medical field, so it was always inevitable that the majority of my time was delegated to schoolwork and applying for jobs online, as I was living off the funds I made from my last retail job. The quality of my life at this time was both extremely stressful and depressing, as I would literally live off eating crackers and cheap instant noodle packs. I would even go as far as to sleep hungry sometimes, just to save every last dollar possible to help pay for my rent and school funds. I remember staying up late one night, as I had a biology exam coming up within a few days. I could recall being overwhelmed from the monotonous material I was drilling into my head when I heard a loud knock on my door. Sarah? Sarah, can you answer the door? It's Charlie. Hello? I know you're in there. Oh. I heard you watching TV five minutes ago. Yes. How do you know she was watching TV? I need to talk to you. Can you please answer the door? <coughs> hey, Sarah. You know your rent is due, right? I'll get it to you by tomorrow. I've just been a little flustered with school. And... Don't worry. You can give it to me tomorrow. Thank you so much, Charlie. You're a lifesaver. To make it easier on you, I do take other forms of payment, you know. Uh, I'm well, good. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'll see you in a minute. And you say a form of payment. Now, you you be a little creep right there. But I'll just pay you tomorrow. What's wrong, Sarah? I'm just trying to help a pretty little girl like you out. Don't you want my help? Don't worry. You It'll only take five you? minutes to hop. We'll act like nothing ever happened. Imagine not having to worry about paying a single bill again, Sarah. We ain't even looking at her face. Nah, nah, nah. Did I ever tell you that you look just as beautiful as my daughter? I said I'm good. You better pay me tomorrow, you little brat. Or else you can get the hell out of my property. I've always had unsettling vibes from my landlord the day I moved in here, but unfortunately couldn't really do much, as the housing market for students around the area were either occupied or way over my budget. As busy as I was with school, I was always a social butterfly at heart, and had a pretty decent following on my social media. I unfortunately didn't make any money online, but I did have about a couple hundred fans in my DMs and comments section, asking if I had an OnlyFans. I, of course, didn't own one, as I was always hesitant in encountering weirdos within the online world. I really didn't want to run into the risk of being recognized by any school colleagues or relatives for that matter, considering the internet was a large place where anything could be shared or screen recorded nowadays. At the time that this occurred, I was extremely eager to make any form of income without having to deal with the hassle of working a regular job which is why I ultimately decided to sign up for an OnlyFans account. I decided to take a couple of provocative selfies of myself while wearing some outfits that I thought would be appealing to the rather why? large male audience I had accumulated through my years on social media. I even went as far to take self-portraits of myself in bed using a professional no, camera I had owned from a while ago. I remember uploading the catalog of images on my profile 
while promoting it on my Instagram story, just to see if there was going to be any first-time buyers willing to see the other side of me. I made sure to hide the stories from my close relatives, especially my mother, as I didn't want them knowing I wanted to explore the mature side of myself and that I wasn't solely depending on making a living using OnlyFans. I can recall it not even being five minutes yet, when I noticed a notification on OnlyFans. I then refreshed my homepage, only to see that I got my first paid subscriber. If I had to be honest, I was quite thrilled at the notion that anyone would be interested in me, or should I say my looks. I remember the user then sending a message saying, Hey beautiful, happy to be your first OnlyFans sub. I typed, Thank you, let me know if you'd like to see more. The user then playfully requested for several provocative pictures of myself wearing lingerie. I felt a little uncomfortable hearing such a request, but I knew in the back of my head that this was going- You don't really gotta do that. You don't. If you use your OF for content creating, you listen. You don't gotta do that. Please God, please help her to- You don't got to be doing this. Why have the interviews at Creep always been conducted within the presence of the lawyer who works for Creep? It takes some getting used to, especially I if I wanted to pursue a potential career on OnlyFans. Regardless of who this person was, I decided to take the requested pictures in front of a mirror using okay, my cell phone. Right, right. I then and, uploaded and, the I, images onto my laptop creep, right? and charged he, the man he, a lump he, sum he, of $50 per photo. Stuff, right? The man then responded, I want to be your one and only customer forever. I obviously found this a bit alarming but casually brushed it off by right, telling the not, user I was bad. going to go study, and that I was going to catch him later. I then made my way to the kitchen to make some instant noodles, while resuming the dreadful exam preparation I had procrastinated on since the beginning of the day. I remember studying for at least a good two hours straight before calling it a night. I then headed back to my bedroom, only to notice my laptop was still open and wanted to see if there was any further activity with my OnlyFans account. That's when I saw at least a hundred unread messages coming from the same user that I had interacted with earlier. Whoa, 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 the whoa, 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 Now, you taking it too far. Now, you want to go to jail? Like, I don't care. Take him to jail. Take him to jail. Good. Why? Why? Why you, she said she going to study and you still text her and saying, I want you to send more. I want you to do this for me. I want to be the only one for me. I'm sorry. Can you please uh, uh, come back on here? Can you please do that for me? Please, please. I'm sorry. Hey, no. No, 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 no. To, hello, I've been waiting for you for hours now. Uh, to really aggressive messages like, you answer me, ho. Computer for this How's left me completely dumbfounded, as the user then seemed apologetic towards the end of the messages, as if he How suffered from bipolar disorder. Then, um, I honestly apologize contemplated on blocking this guy, uh, no. but as I scrolled through the messages, I noticed one of them offering to pay me $100 if I sent a video of myself crying on camera. I couldn't tell if this guy was joking or if it was some sort of sick future, you probably man, seen him? but uh, I decided to oblige you, you as I really crying? needed the money. You... I began to screen record a video of myself using my webcam and began to force myself to cry by thinking of sad things like the death of my grandmother or the divorce of my parents and how my dad left my mom hanging to be a deadbeat dad. I eventually stopped the filming and sent the video to the user for a price tag of $100. About five seconds later, the user immediately sends another odd request, as if he disregarded my last video and was craving for more. The message read, Can you stick your finger down your throat and vomit in a bucket? I'll pay you another $100. Please don't tell me about it. Doing. Don't do it. This seems Please extremely do off-putting. But I felt as if I'm, I was obliged I'm to do so, you don't considering do it. I was an extremely I'm broke student you don't do and needed this. any kind of funds to get my do hands this. on. You want I decided more, to grab a large you. bowl from I'm my kitchen cabinet while contemplating my conscious decision to do, you do such it, a thing. Want more, more, as I sat in front of I'll, my laptop, more, more I held bail. the bowl with Please one hand and stuck my index finger down my throat with the other, while simultaneously trying to regurgitate the instant noodles I had just eaten.
I then sent the user the video, with a price tag of $100. Again, the user instantly replies in a matter of seconds, with another odd request. His message read, Cut a handful of your hair off using a knife, and I'll pay you $200. I felt pretty hesitant at first, but as I digested the I odd request, you. I thought it would be an easy 200 bucks, considering how I always wanted to get a haircut anyway. I responded with a stern, sure, BRB, as I went into the kitchen to grab a knife from one of the kitchen drawers. As I stared into the reflection of the blade, I began second-guessing myself, as the thought of sadistically tearing my hair off with a blade seemed very inhumane. I unfortunately allowed my stupidity to completely overcloud my judgement, as I ended up biting on a piece of cloth while raising my hair with one hand, and then slowly cutting it off with the knife on my other hand. I remember trying my best not to make too much noise from my repugnant decisions, as the sheer distress from the back and forth carving of my hair left my scalp throbbing in an excruciating manner. I then shouted, There's your stupid video, you sick freak! You happy now? Huh? Huh? As I gestured a hand of my detached hair. That's when the user immediately responds with another real. sadistic request, saying, Now, cut your finger off for another $200. What the f- I told her to not send no more videos. After throwing up in the bowl for enough, I'd say don't- It's your fault. You should have never gotten it or F in the first place. Who in the right mind said or F was a good idea? It was good and you were a concentrator, but you're doing it for, for her money. You ain't doing it for a career or a living to help your a career out. You do man. I immediately dismissed the user using profanities and vulgar language, basically telling him to go F himself, as I simultaneously block his account. I then went into the washroom and began to sit in the bathtub to reflect on my bizarre decisions and what possessed me to do such a thing. I could then hear my phone vibrating on the bathroom sink several times from the notification set on my phone. As I got out of the shower, I checked my phone, only to see the notifications were from a user with the same profile name on Instagram. I could tell that the user was obviously a stalker, as he had no followers but was following at least a couple hundred others. I then opened the user's messages, only to see screenshots and video footage of what transpired within our OnlyFans interaction. As I scrolled up, I noticed a lengthy message from the user asking me to bring a knife to an undisclosed location if I didn't want him to send this to anyone else, almost like I was getting taunted and blackmailed at the same Tell time. Me you, you are not going to I ended it. up accepting the user's messages what and the replying with a firm. I'm gonna sue you if you don't delete those you images die. videos. He you then responds die. with an image of my mother's Instagram and says, you are going Is this your die. mom's Instagram? I then reply with, You're going to die. What the You're going to die. Don't do it! I'm begging right, you! I, 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 try, I, try I, I try to okay, help you. I try to help you. I try to help you. And you want to help you. That's when I tucked the knife under I, I try to help you. I try to help you. And you didn't you, you, you want my help. I, then I try to help the user you. For further try, I try to stop her. I my try, you didn't see. You didn't, you didn't see. I try to stop her. And she didn't want to listen. Now she, now she will end up in a situation that she ain't going to come out. Y'all saw me try to tell her to not send no videos in the first place. And what she did? Send them anyway. Mm-mm-mm only to see a homeless-looking individual laying on a bench. That's when I get another text from the user saying, Since you didn't want to cut your finger off, cut his, and I'll leave you alone. I then pulled out the knife and began to approach the homeless man, as I could see he was completely passed out drunk from the empty alcohol bottle laying next to the bench Please he was sleeping cut on. The man finger. As I cautiously He's approached the man, I began hey, to hey, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you right here. I'm trying to help you to go to jail. I'm trying to help you. the knife in one quick motion. Bro, I'm trying to help you. Bro! That's when I ran back towards the main road as the man screamed in agony. I eventually made it back to my place and began panting in distress and exhaustion 
without making it obvious to the other individuals you in the household you that I had initially you stepped out. I then abruptly got a call on my cell phone. I was a little hesitant what? to answer the phone, considering I had not given out any personal information to the user. As I pull out my phone, I can see that the call was surprisingly coming from my mom. I answered the phone and said, Hello? What the hell is wrong with you, Sarah? Why would you do that? Why? Have you freaking lost your damn mind? You're all over the damn internet! She had, I... She had, I tried to help her! I was 22 years old and was always despondent from the lack of job offers I was getting online. I try to help her. Not having the responsibility of a job drove me crazy for the latter part of my post-graduation time off, as the lack of response from the dozens of job applications I had applied for online were either being neglected or probably in someone's spam box. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make a steady income, which would have allowed me to find a place with my boyfriend John and possibly move in together. I also wanted to prove to my parents that I was something they could genuinely be proud of, but they unfortunately weren't the most supportive, as I got the move out of my place vibes every time we interacted with each other. My boyfriend, John, was the only person in my life that was supportive of me. I was supportive of him as well, as John went through a traumatic experience of dealing with his ex-girlfriend's death about a year or two ago. She apparently died from a brain tumor which left her in a coma for the latter part of their relationship. It was obviously a bitter pill for John to swallow, but through time, he eventually came to terms with the loss and found some closure along the way. There was a time when John recommended that I use OnlyFans if I wasn't able to snatch a job within the next few months, as it was a great source of income according to what his ex made off of it. I figured I'd give it a try, as I thought it couldn't hurt to show off my looks in exchange for a couple hundred dollars. I remember taking a few self-portraits of myself while wearing the most seductive outfits I could find in my wardrobe. I then made an OnlyFans. Is this all these girls gonna do on the OF? Y'all like, y'all got no other way to get money on, on OF? Like, what other way y'all gonna get money on OF? Mm -mm -mm and uploaded the images, in hopes that I could capture the attention of any potential consumers from around the world. Several weeks later, my OnlyFans success had taken an unexpected turn, as I grew a pretty large following and was able to make a decent amount of income to suffice myself. There was this one user who was usually consistent in requesting for my content through my DMs. I could honestly say that he or she was the most active on my page considering they were requesting for videos or photos almost every day. I felt as if I had established a strong rapport with this one individual, as we chatted often as I could in order to maintain a healthy relationship like the, uh, with that uh, user. Uh, um, girl. I began Please, to feel uh. slightly uncomfortable over time, as the user began requesting for weird things like a photo of myself with my foot behind my back or replicate a murder scene in your bedroom using fake blood. I think it's hot when girls are covered in blood. It reminds me of my favorite movie, Gone Girl. Why have the interviews at Creek always been conducted within the presence of the lawyer who works for Creek? No regular person would ever ask for a murder scene or to kill someone or cut off someone's uh, body part. Only a creep will ask for that. Right? For one, we give y'all the right to even think, think about things like that. Girl. What the hell? I found it weird that someone would get off on these kinds of things, but me and my boyfriend both mutually agreed to take the high road and go ahead with the requests, considering the majority of my revenue was solely coming from this one particular person. As time went on, the request became more and more bizarre the longer we stayed in contact. I remember the user requested if I could dye my hair black, or to start wearing more darker shades of makeup while taking photos. It honestly felt as if I was playing dress up for the amount of demands the user was asking for. Like One of the like, most bizarre uh, requests was a daily video of like, myself um, running on a treadmill. It looked like she looked like that, um, what that one movie? Um, Jane Ortega 
and she was dressing in all um 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 all black. It was um Oh Wednesday. That's what she looked like. She looked like Wednesday. Wednesday Allen. She looked like Wednesday Allen. You should try and make her right now out Wednesday Allen? I don't know. It was almost as if I was getting paid to run, shower, and then take provocative photos each and every day in exchange for X amount of dollars. This occurred for a couple of months, as I've lost close to 30 pounds from the constant treadmill fetish the user got off on. It was getting to the point where I felt like I was beginning to lose my identity, so I stopped using OnlyFans and just occupied myself by staying away from my laptop and spending more time with my boyfriend. I remember this one night, my boyfriend was in the shower while I was watching TV, mm -hmm. when I decided to check my OnlyFans account, just to see if that weirdo was still messaging me. I didn't have my laptop with me at the time, so I decided to use my boyfriend's laptop to log in. Okay. As I opened up the site, I realized that my boyfriend surprisingly had an OnlyFans account that was already logged in. I then noticed he had the same username as the person that was messaging me throughout all of these months. That's when I closed the tab. Is your the creep? Is your boyfriend? Is my girlfriend the creep or your man is the creep, right? Isn't that not bad? You got the person you live with every single day watch your own stories on, on OF. So isn't that wrong? I like you wouldn't have nobody else that you love better to watch your story except for the person that you love. I been unexpectedly saw a picture of John with his ex-girlfriend on his desktop wallpaper. As I surveyed the portrait scattered around his room, I then realized that my boyfriend wasn't wait, supporting wait. my OnlyFans because he cared about me. He was doing it because he wanted me to look exactly like his dead ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Hold up! You wouldn't support her? You just want her to look like you dead ex. What type of what type of what type of crazy crazy mess up situation you in? Oh, yeah. part three. The story creeps me out. Just thinking about it, right. now I find it disturbing and just guy. downright wrong oh, yeah. on so many Not levels. Girls, oh, yeah, it happened boy. about a year guy, ago oh, yeah. when yeah. I was up late one night watching TV in my bedroom. I was feeling a bit lonely and decided to be a little snoopy as I lacked any female companionship due to quarantining for months since the global pandemic. I obviously couldn't go out and meet girls like I used to, so I decided to resort to apps such as Tinder or Bumble. I unfortunately got tired of using such apps over time, as the rules of quarantining defeated the purpose of potentially meeting someone in person anyway. The lack of social interaction and inability to date was starting to get to me, which is why I decided to start entertaining the idea of using OnlyFans. I've seen my friends use OnlyFans in the past, so exploring such content wasn't a foreign thing to me. The time was roughly 1am when I decided to go on Instagram and scope out any random model that I thought would be worth spending a few hundred dollars on. I remember coming across Sandy. this one girl named Ava. Sandy! 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 Get over here! Now! Sandy! Get over here! Sit. No. Sit down before you get pumped. Uh, she was petite and brunette, and of course had an attractive face. 
looked for qualities I valued a lot when looking at a female at first glance. I decided to check out her OnlyFans from her Instagram bio and committed to subscribing on her page just so I could see. Shut up with that barking! Mm. Oh, you sitting there barking? Do you want to get out? I'm not letting you out. All you do is want to poop and pee everywhere. See more exclusive content and hopefully make up for the lackluster night I was having. I obviously had to punch in my credit card details, but was definitely not ashamed to do such a thing, as Ava's content looked pretty promising. That's when I decided to shoot her a message and perhaps request for more raunchy and seductive photos. I figured it couldn't hurt to shoot my shot. Ava surprisingly responded with stuff like, Hey there, but you're looking for some fun. What can I do for you, babe? I ended up responding with, can you send me some hot pics to help make me not feel lonely? About two minutes later, Ava sent me a photo with an unlock for $50. I felt a little nervous, but decided to go ahead with the purchase, only to see what I had anticipated. What? Her exquisite face in conjunction with her curvy and petite body left me thirsty and wanting for more. Over the next hour or so, I spent okay, okay, approximately okay, okay. $300 on photos and video clips of Ava through the interactions we had through our DMs. Let's just say I ended up sleeping pretty well that night, and definitely got my money's worth. The next morning, I decided to Google search more about Ava, just to see if I could potentially find Google more search. content of her online without having to pay for more on her OnlyFans. That's when things took a darker turn and it what? completely changed the whole complexion of the story. What? I remember seeing an obituary of Ava as one of the first links on the Google search feed. I decided to click it and see if the obituary was legitimate. After reading the obituary going, further, it was apparent that Ava had tragically passed away several weeks ago due to undisclosed reasons. A million questions started racing through my head as I started to wonder who the hell was I talking to? And how could she send me all of these photos and videos of herself as she was supposedly dead? As I dug a little deeper on Google, I found several articles stating that her own mother had been selling photos and videos of her deceased daughter to gain profit off of her. I remember- What the f- Yeah, this, uh, uh, a little, little signs. I, 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 I have, mm, mm, I have seven questions to ask y'all, but is it real hard to uh, explain it? Video. I remember getting so many goosebumps to the point where I legitimately thought I was going to throw up all over my computer desk. I've since never used OnlyFans, as the thought of talking to a stranger who is deceased but has their account ran by another individual freaks me out just thinking about it. Either way, this story is downright terrifying, as I pray the mom seeks professional help and hopefully finds some closure in the passing of her daughter. This all took place in my home country of Brazil. My buddy had a friend called Antonio. I never minute. met the guy personally, but everyone who had told me he was a really funny guy. And like most funny guys who are at least a little bit handsome, he was very popular with the ladies. One day, Antonio told my buddy that he had organized a date with a model. Shh. Shut up! Damn. A model, said my friend. You're serious. Anyone I've heard of? Maybe, said Antonio, who handed his phone over to my friend. 
Open on the screen was an OnlyFans page. The girl whose page it was didn't have that many images or videos uploaded, so it was obvious her page was pretty new, but my friend did recognize her immediately. She was a local woman called Isabella, young and absolutely gorgeous, one of the best looking girls he had ever laid his eyes on. In his words, she had a booty like an onion, it'd make a grown man cry. Antonio had met her in our small town and asked her for her contact information. Instead, she took his phone and opened up her OnlyFans page. From there, he became a follower. He sent her a DM and asked her out on a date. She said no at first, but Antonio was persistent and kept asking. Okay, okay. Rather than reply using words, she sent back an image which was hidden behind a paywall, the right. equivalent of about 50, 50 bucks. bucks. For what? Antonio was a pretty wealthy young man, so as he was, he paid the money and opened the message without a second thought, hoping for a raunchy picture. So you ain't you ain't deep with uh, the reading the message? Was just text, mm -mm -mm. A time and address. She, she might be date. scamming you. It also said to bring money to pay for dinner. Like I said, my friend knew who Isabella was and knew that she already had a boyfriend, a mean fellow de my called Davy. Davy rolled with some really bad dudes was into some shady shiz, and you could tell just by looking at the guy that you wouldn't want to mess with him. My buddy warned Antonio to be careful, to cut contact with Isabella and not to go on this date with her. Antonio didn't listen, since Isabella told him that she was single and that her and this Davy guy must have broken up. That evening, Antonio got dressed up and drove off on his moped to meet Isabella. Now my friend, being a man of culture, was of course a little bit curious himself about Isabella's online uploads. He decided to sign up on the site and became a follower of hers himself. It was only cheap to do so, the equivalent of a couple of bucks a month. Well, there weren't many pictures and videos to look through, but Isabella was clearly focusing on quality over quantity, and my friend wasn't disappointed with what he saw. He logged off around 11pm and went to bed. That next morning, my friend sent Antonio a message, asking him how things went with Isabella. No reply. Antonio usually replied to his messages really quickly. Maybe things had gone well after all, and he was still with her. He waited until the afternoon. Still no reply. Not that unusual for Antonio, but maybe he was just getting a little afternoon delight. No. The days passed, and there was still no word from Antonio. My friend checked in with everyone who knew him, including his boss at work. Nobody had seen him since that night. People were starting to get worried. The authorities seemed to have little interest in helping find him, saying that Antonio was a grown man and had probably gone off traveling or something by himself since his moped was never found. Isabella continued posting on her account as normal, and since my friend was still following her, he decided to send her a DM asking if she knew where Antonio was. If so, was he alright? Instead of text, she sent back an image, which he could unlock, for 50 bucks. No words, just an image, up, hidden behind up, a paywall. So, so you tell Without me- didn't have a lot of money, but something told him- I, 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 want, I want to I want, I want to see he paid the money details. and opened the picture. It was a photo of a dirty shovel in close-up. The hand gripping it was obviously male. Behind it, he could make out a hole in the earth, large enough to fit a human inside. It was captioned. What do you think? My friend didn't want to believe it, but in his heart, he knew what had happened, and he knew he'd never see Antonio again. He tried desperately to get. The, did she kill him? Did she kill him? I I don't know. Did she? Or is it a possible joke? To get Isabella to reply to him via DM, but that was the last he ever heard from her too. She continued uploading content to her account, but both she and Davy left town shortly after Antonio vanished. Surely not a coincidence. It seemed like both of them were in on this together after all. So, what happened that fateful night? Scenario 1. Davy was using Isabella about. and forcing her to post images of herself online so he could make a little money. She was the face 
and he was the one behind the messages and lured Antonio into a trap. Scenario 2. Davy didn't know that Isabella was using the site, and when he learned that she was actually going on a date with someone, he flipped. Maybe Isabella, realizing that Antonio dressed well and must have had some money in his pocket, targeted him specifically. Maybe they held him up and he decided to fight back. Maybe they planned to do away with him from the beginning and take whatever money he brought in his pockets. Sadly, Maybe. the investigators did very little to help. Davy had to ask the, the cops or the detective for help. Rug and told him and Isabella to skip down. Several months came and went, with neither Davy nor Isabella being seen or No in information. My friend continued to keep an eye on her page, hoping that a new clue would come to light. He thought that would be the end of it. Then, one night, he received a notification saying Boy. Isabella had uploaded a new photo. Alright. He logged in to check all what right. it was. It was an image sent to all of her followers, titled, My Final Post. He opened it. It was a blurry picture of Isabella in a dark, wooded area. Her eye was black, her face cut, and she looked absolutely terrified, her hands up near her face as if she was trying to protect herself. There was no caption to explain the image. Both the picture and her account were deleted shortly afterwards. Davy hasn't returned to our town since, you... and for our sakes, I hope he never does. You... But you didn't. Why?